Hello everyone, welcome to The Dev Method. My name's Ricky. So today, let's talk about some TypeScript versus Go. And I don't mean them to be like competitors, but just a comparison between the two. And let's do it in a specific area. Let's do it with transforming JSON strings into whatever the value type we can, uh, a, some sort of structure of, uh, or object. And then let's transform it back uh, to a string. So it, in doing this exercise myself, I found some of the differences between the two languages. So hopefully I'll point out those um, with this example that you'll see here in a moment. And um, we'll first, first look at the Go version, and then we'll look at a TypeScript version. And then uh, just for kicks, I also did a Node.js version, which Spoiler alert is the same as the TypeScript version. I wanna show you here that um, we have, uh, in this main function, this is where we're gonna be looking at today. And the whole point of this here is uh, to get data out of this part here. So this will be step one. Um, we transform it here to some sort of something. So I call that uh, my data here. And then we wanna change one part of it and then we'll print out what that change is. And we're changing something called age. And then we'll transform it back to a string and then print out the result here. Um, actually, this is the part that transforms it to a string, but let's not get into the, the details of it yet. But that's the idea so far. So the first part here, uh, get data. So when we're fetching data, uh, this is the function that we're using. Your, your functions are gonna be called something different and your way of actually executing and implementing that function is gonna be different. Um, so I, that's not the point of why I'm showing that here. I just wanna show you an idea of what we have. Now, um, the biggest thing here is like there's uh, multiple value return type. You could think of this as like a tuple or some people call this a tuple. And the idea being that you're returning two different types of information and it is like a, a convention in Go to return an error and then check for that error. And typically the way that you do that is you check if the error um, is equal to or not equal to null. And if that's the case, then an error occurred and you need to you know, do some sort of error handling. So that's, that's the convention, that's the idea. So that's how this API is designed. Uh, it's just called get my data and it returns uh, the first result part of it being a string and then the second part being the error itself. So that's what we have there. And then we print it out. So this is uh, imported at the top. I'll show you this part here. So we're importing some encoding slash JSON and then also FMT. And these are just for us to use in, in the application um, so we could just print out stuff. And then the JSON stuff is gonna be the encoding part. So this encoding part is the next part after we print out the before. And so uh, the way we want to do this is we first need a, a value or like, a, I'm sorry, we need a variable to store the value of the data in. And the way this is gonna work is that um, this unmarshal here, it's a big explanation on the screen right now for you to see, um, but it actually takes in uh, an array or a slice, still working on my go, so I, uh, either way, takes in that information and that's what this is doing here. And then um, it is actually saving it to the address of, this is the address of operator here, if you're familiar with C, that's a thing, um, into this thing I call result. And then uh, what it returns is actually an error or fills in all the data that's here. So this kind of starts out as like nothing. A little strange to think about if you're coming from TypeScript or JavaScript. Um, well, I guess in JavaScript, you might see this a lot more, but um, typically you want to initialize your variables and not leave them null or undefined or nil. So here we actually have to specifically just declare that that is our where we want our result to be. And then this puts it in there, this, this call to unmarshal. So uh, if an error does occur, again, we have to explicitly check and uh, handle that error as we see fit. So this, again, along that convention, almost every time you're doing something that could possibly cause an error, um, you're basically gonna think of yourself as at least adding uh, three more lines of code, which would be the condition to check if the error is there, the one to close it, and then at least one or many different ways to handle that error, um, or many different lines of code to handle that error. So then here's where we change the value 
I'm sorry, we don't change the value yet. We just are getting the value. We're putting it into a local variable, something that we could use. And this is like the variable part of the entire uh, script or, or program that we're making. It just does whatever. And uh, it could go to multiple different places. You can copy the variable. You can do some addition, multiplication. It's a number, so you know that's why I say those things. But you could do other different types of transforms to it. Um, so we're just printing out here what the type is of that age. And then um, here's where we actually transform it. So that's that part there. I just decided to do four. It's going to start out as 99 and then go to four. Then the last part is uh, let's make another uh, byte array or byte slice of uh, this data. We'll call it the transform data. Again, we do the same thing. I won't go over this another time, but that's the same thing as what we had before, uh, checking for errors. And then we print it out. So that's the idea. So let me run this right now. And the way that I'm going to run it is go run main.go. There it is. Let me pull this up so you can see a little bit more. Okay, so that's what was run. And then we have the before. Then I just show you what the value is because I'm picking out the value that I want. And then the after. So um, let's talk about this part here, the before. So the before part, it, if we look at the actual string, if we can read this JSON as a string, um, we actually have another property in here called name that actually has a string value, not an integer. And then we have age, which is then an integer. But notice that age there um, in my data. This is the declaration of that type. So we'll actually see in a second here how this is a little different than the TypeScript version. But that's how we know we can get the age. Now, if the age wasn't there, I'll just comment this out for a moment. We'll actually get an error in Go saying that that doesn't exist and we can't change it here. Um, and I would bet that the unmarshal implementation, if it's not declared, it's not putting it in there. Um, another thing about age is that it had to be capitalized. Um, I believe if it's lowercase, let's let's see here. Just do age and then age. Let's run the same program. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, so it just it wouldn't have gotten the information at all. So it does have to be capitalized. It's uh, Go's way of saying that that's like a public thing that you can not only see, but then you can write information there. So that's what that is. Let me change this back real quick. Okay, so now let's look at the same thing, but in TypeScript. So TypeScript, uh, again, I'll just go over the steps. We have the function, and then we have, well, we have a little bit different of a setup, but um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Notice uh, we have an await here. So in JavaScript, if this was returning a promise, which this actually is, it's returning a promise of a string. Um, we actually have a couple different ways that we can handle this. Um, we could use dot then and use some sort of callback to handle the rest of the code below, but we're actually gonna use await so that we can see it synchronously in line, one line after another. And uh, it doesn't mean that's executing synchronously like Go is, it means that it's actually, um, there is some sort of waiting that's happening um, until we get the value, and then we're going to run the rest of the code. So uh, we have the before, we have the result, and so we actually have this like parse. So this is the string. We have json.parse, which is just a part of the language, so it's not something that we imported at the top. Um, and then we give it the string, and then it gives us the result. Right now it says any, so we don't have a, a definitive definition of what this is, like how we had in Go. That could be good and bad. Um, there, in, in the Go arena, if we go back here just a second and look at that, um, this age here, if we don't have something that's there, like let's just say, uh, I'll just put last as a string. And if we try and run this here, uh, it will still work. But I wonder if, you know, if you were to try and result.last here. Well, I guess I'll do this. Yeah, it won't even let me experiment with that. But essentially what I'm getting at here is that, uh, well, actually probably what we should do is just get rid of this. Yeah, okay, so we didn't, we didn't really get any errors here. So we didn't get rid of, uh, so we got rid of age. We found out that it actually totally is fine. 
um, was still running the code here. Um, I'm not totally sure. I've just not experienced enough to know what other errors you might actually get. But jump back to the TypeScript version. Um, that's the difference right now, is that we have something that's clearly defined so that we can get the information out of there. Because J JavaScript has this concept of like anonymous objects, um, this uh, is very common and works just fine. Um, and now I'm using some sort of destructuring to get the result out. This is very much the same as like result.age and uh, just age like that. That's basically the same thing. Um, now, there's other parts of destructuring. We won't go over that. Um, I might have a video on that either later or in the past about that. Um, now here's where I do the type again. I do the, I'm actually converting this to a string. This is string interpolation I'm using. So I'm not using format modifiers or specifiers to format the string of the number. Um, but then, yeah, so now I'm coming down here to JSON stringify. Notice this thing, and then I modify it. So this is a little different. This is kind of like a, uh, a two-in-one here. So this is actually called the spread operator, the three dots in front of result. So result is the type any, and it's, it's actually an object. Now, when I spread it, it means copy all the key value pairs into this new object that's enclosing it. And then I'm going to override what age is. So I'm going to say age is actually going to be four. That's very common to see um, when you're when you're trying to copy information around. I could have done result.age equals something else. That could have worked, but that's not what we're doing here. Um, so this makes an actual copy. If we go back here, we look at this. Um, this is actually uh, modifying it, and I, I suppose I could like make the copy. So I can call my copy and uh, do result like this, and then say my copy dot age. That would work. That's the, that's the same idea as what we're just doing there in TypeScript. And then I log it out. Now going back to the error handling though, because that was the one of the biggest differences you might see here. This is not the only way to error handle. I could have done, you know how I said there was a dot then. I could also, either before the then or after the then, I could do a dot catch, and I could catch the error. That's another way to handle this. But because I have this try, um, that's what's actually going on here. It's just, if it's setting up something in, in the runtime to say, hey, if any error happens, uh, we're gonna catch that, and we're gonna throw it down here. And then you can handle, handle the error there. Now, I guess the only difference is, is I don't know where the error came from, there could be multiple types of errors. There could be runtime errors. That's a lot more common than in uh, Go. Go is statically typed. Um, well, I guess TypeScript is too, but there, I, I, just in my experience, you're just probably going to see more uh, mysterious runtime errors when you're trying to get some data from JSON that uh, you thought was there and it's not, not actually there. So that is the difference of looking at the two. I just want to give you a sneak peek at what that's like. Now, um, I ran it in Go, and again, that was go run main.go. Okay, now let's run it in, uh, let's actually, we'll do it side by side. And we'll do, um, I'm not gonna time it. Let's do it as just node, because right now there's actually nothing in here that's totally TypeScript uh, specific. Um, so I'm gonna do it as node so you guys can kind of see and so I did time the two because I'm sure there might be people thinking like which one's faster or that that could be something you think later down the line. Um, with something as simple as this, running it in Node versus Go, it seemed to be almost the exact same. Um, I'm sure massive data loads, you would see a big difference. Or if you're iterating through hundreds or thousands of uh, you know, items in an array or something, that might be very different. But that's the Node version. Um, I'll show you here now the TypeScript version. I just set up another. Thing to run here. So yeah, it took a slight bit longer, but that's only because I'm sure the or some, I'm using uh, TS dash node, TS node, um, very similar to node, but now it's looking at TypeScript files and it's transpiling them to JavaScript so that it can actually run that in node. Yeah, so I, I think that this was pretty helpful for me to go through just as an exercise um, for one or the other. Now, the only thing I would say that is missing that I had here is this type, and it's age int. 
Now there are, if you want to look up the documentation, I do have um, a link below uh, in the description about encoding JSON or decoding JSON, marshalling and unmarshalling. But there's like this annotation syntax where you can say that this is actually a lowercase age or something like that. Um, not sure what that says, incompatible with reflection type or something. I, I don't know. Um, int eight or something. I'm not really sure. I, I don't really know exactly what the syntax is. So let's let's forget that for a moment. But let me let me run the go here just to, for a second. Yeah, so see it came out as age here instead of age there. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that that's interesting. And actually something I'm noticing now too is that this is capitalized here, but it did get the right age there. It did get the right value. So that's interesting. Um, I guess the capital letter, it maybe is like a fallback to do lowercase first letter. So interesting. If we wanted to do the same thing with a type, uh, there's an interface and there's a type. I'm not going to go over the two differences, so I'll just try and use the exact same idea. I'll call this my data. And then you give it some sort of uh, type definition. So I'm not going to do int, though. So this is a difference here. There's number. And I think there's like big int. Yeah, there's like, there's like other things there, too, related to numbers. But typically, this is going to be the equivalent that you get in um, TypeScript is number. So now if I did this, and then I did that parse, like so, this will actually work, at least with this, you know, the current settings that I have now. Um, so let's go ahead and just run that real quick. Yeah, so no issues. Another way I could do this is I could say as, that's more or less casting. But that's the idea between the two. Um, that's what I wanted to point out to you guys in this video is just a little of a the same thing, um, but being done in two different languages. And uh, if you guys want to learn more, I have some of the links below. Um, if you're looking to learn more TypeScript and whatnot, I do have other uh, videos where I, I do some React projects. You'll probably see some TypeScript in there. Um, other than that, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, have a good one.